Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read you a story called I Am Jackie Robinson. I am Jackie Robinson and I will always lead the way. For those of you that don't know, Jackie Robinson was the first African American to play professional baseball in the United States. His story isn't an easy one, but it's got a great ending. I Am Jackie Robinson by Brad Meltzer. Sometimes it's hard to be brave. My mother was brave and she liked brave people. When I was born, the youngest of five kids, she even named me after someone brave. His middle name will be Roosevelt, Jack Roosevelt Robinson. Why Roosevelt? After President Teddy Roosevelt, he fought to make sure that black people were treated the same as everyone else. You'll see, I'm not worried. That's what the mom said when one of Jackie's older brothers said, that's a lot for little Jackie to live up to. But having a brave name doesn't make you brave. In fact, as a kid, I didn't like sleeping alone. I used to sleep in my mom's bed. Even when she tried to bribe me, I wouldn't leave. I'll give you a quarter to go to your own room, she said. Not a chance, it's better here. One of the scariest moments came when I was eight years old. I was outside and a girl from across the street called me a terrible name. I was so mad, I yelled the name right back at her. Her father came running immediately. He didn't like it that a black boy was standing up to his white daughter. We were the only black family on her block. What did you call her, the father said. She started it, I said. I don't remember who threw the first rock, but the fight was on, me versus the dad. I had a good arm, but no one wins in a rock fight. Eventually, the girl's mother came out and broke it up. Like I said, the world can be a scary place, but even as a kid, there was one thing that always made me happy. Sports and winning at sports. Okay, that's two things. I loved playing everything. Baseball, football, basketball, soccer, marbles, and even dodgeball. All the kids would get in a circle. White, black, Hispanic, Asian, we all played together. The rules were simple. If the ball hit you, you were out. I duck and jump and leap and of course throw and throw and throw. By the time I was done, I'd be the last one standing. But the truth was they weren't mad at me for winning. They appreciated the skill that it took. Those childhood games were some of the only times I wasn't judged by the color of my skin. Still, that didn't make all my problems go away. At the local public pool in Brookside Park, you could only go swimming if you were white. If your skin was black, they locked you out. In the pool, one of the children is saying, don't they know it's hot out here? And Jackie said, trust me, they know. They still weren't letting the black children in. When people complained, they gave us one day each week, Wednesday. Every Wednesday from 2 to 5 p.m., they'd open the pool to anybody black Mexican or Asian. Don't they know how mean that is? Trust me, they know, Jackie said. Oh, come on. He even swims in his hat. 
Maybe that B on his hat stands for buoyant, one of the kids says. Buoyant means being able to float. So how do you win when you feel like you're fighting the entire world? My mother, who worked as a maid, showed me the answer. Back then, we were so poor, we sometimes ate only two meals a day. To help us out, every Saturday night, the local bakery would let us take their leftovers. And the milkman, back when milk was delivered to your house, would give us whatever extra he had. It's a feast to all, look at all this food. What do you mean? It's not just for us. We weren't the only ones struggling for money. My mom took the extra food and shared it with all of our neighbors. That's right. She even shared it with the angry man who threw rocks at me. Would you like some extra bread? Wow, thanks. That's very kind of you. I'm Mally, Jackie's mom. Nice to meet you, Mally. That's how we got to be friends with everyone in the neighborhood. It was one of my mom's best lessons. When you do something good, it brings out the good in others. Plus, the more our neighbors got to know us, the more they realized just how much black and white people were alike. I learned a similar lesson from a local mechanic named Carl Anderson. He saw the group of boys I used to hang out with. We called ourselves the Pepper Street Gang. We were a bunch of poor kids. For fun, we'd throw dirt clods at cars and swipe golf balls from the local course. When he saw what we were doing, Mr. Anderson took me aside. He didn't lose his temper. Calm as could be, he told me. Jackie, I know why you're following the crowd. You're afraid they'll think you're different or chicken, but it doesn't take guts to follow the crowd. Courage comes from being willing to be different. What Mr. Anderson said that day, it got to me. With the help of my pastor, I stopped hanging out with the gang. From there, I threw myself even deeper into my favorite activity, sports. And winning at sports, especially baseball. As a teenager, I could run so fast, a local reporter noticed that in nearly every game, I stole second, third, and home at least once. <laughs> Some guy wrote in the paper, it's grand larceny. That means um, grand larceny is if you steal something. And they're talking about Jackie stealing the bases, which means that you hit the ball. Well, you can ask whoever's helping you with this story, tell you what stealing a base is, but it's a good thing. In college, I became the first UCLA student to ever letter in four sports in the same season, baseball and football and basketball and track. They said I was one of the best football players in the country. In two seasons in a row, I scored the most points of any player in the league in basketball. And I won the NCAA title that year. Only one American jumped farther than me. But the same problems kept coming back. When the college newspaper wrote a nice article about me, one of my own white teammates purposely smashed into my leg, trying to injure me. He was mad that the article said something nice about a black person. One of Jackie's friends said, don't they know we're on the same team? Oh, trust me, they know. By the time I got out of the army, it still didn't matter that I was one of the best athletes in the country. If you wanted to play professional sports, you had to be white. Back then, 
if you were the world champs, it meant you were the white champs. In all of Major League Baseball, not a single team had even one black player. Oh, and did I mention that if you were on a black team, the pay was worse, the food was worse, and sometimes the only place you got to sleep was on the bus? But that was all about to change. Thanks to a man named Branch Rickey, Ricky was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, one of the most popular teams ever. I have an idea. The Dodgers will secretly look at black players. Are you nuts? People will stop rooting for us. I don't care. It's time we do what's right. With so many players fighting in World War II, Ricky had a plan for filling his team. And after searching all across the United States and the world, Branch Ricky found me. I'm Jackie Robinson, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I think you can play in the major leagues. How do you feel about that? Mr. Ricky told me that he knew I was a good player, but he wanted to know whether I had the guts. He warned me that many white people would be mad to see a black player. There's no one on our side. No owners, no umpires, loads of players and spectators will yell at you. The pitchers will throw baseballs at your head, but no matter what they do, if you get angry, it'll look like you can't handle it. Can you handle it? On April 18th, 1946, at 27 years old, I was given my shot. At Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City, New Jersey, I played my first official game for the Montreal Royals. That was the Brooklyn Dodgers farm team. Thousands of spectators, thousands of black spectators came to see what I could do. Thousands of white people were there too, convinced that a black player couldn't possibly be as good as a white one. And it was up to me to prove them wrong. You'd better believe I was terrified. I didn't want to let people down. Then at 3.04 p.m. in my first at bat, I was thrown out at first. The next time I came up was in the third inning. There were two men on base. The pitcher decided on a fastball. I can still see it coming, chest high, down the middle, but this time, crank! When the ball finally landed 340 feet away in the left stands, no one could say that a black man can't play as well as a white man. Some called it a home run. Others called it history. That afternoon, in five at-bats, I hit and got on base four times. I stole second twice, and I scored four runs. Hooray, Jackie. How's he doing? When he puts that B hat back on, it's going to be for boom. When the game was done, I couldn't get to the locker room because I was mobbed by fans. Black, white, young, old, even the folks rooting for the other team, they were cheering for me. Still, that didn't mean it was easy. When I started playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers, lots of players didn't want me there. Pitchers threw fastballs at my head. Runners stepped on me with their cleats. Catchers even spit on my shoes. But they weren't just coming after me. They told me if I kept playing, they'd hurt my son. Was I mad? Yes. Was I scared? Yes. But I never let it stop me. Game after game, I kept playing, knowing I wasn't just playing for myself. 
each time more and more people, black and white, were cheering for me. In the stands, fans wore, I'm for Jackie buttons. And slowly, eventually, we were all playing together. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic. Baseball open to everyone. It was just like those childhood games of dodgeball. Through the simple game of baseball, the country saw a new possibility, a new option. All they needed was for someone to go first. You see these stats? He stole home 19 times. He was the National League MVP in 1949 when he let in hitting and steals. The Dodgers won six pennants in his 10 seasons. He was one of the few people inducted into the Hall of Fame in the very first year that he was eligible. In life, people tried to scare me. They wanted to stop me. They wanted to make me go away. Why? Because I was different. Each time I wanted to fight back, but for real change to come, you need to lead by example. Being a leader takes bravery, but remember this, no one is born brave. No matter how big or small you are, there will always be things that scare you. It's okay to be afraid. Just don't let it stop you. There is real power in each and every one of us. Use that power to do what's right. Use that power for a cause that you believe in. And most of all, use that power to lead and help others. Remember that park where they wouldn't let him swim? It's now called Robinson Park. Today, no one in baseball can wear number 42, but once a year, every player on every team wears it. It's the one day that everyone looks the same. You know, instead of Brooklyn, you could have told people the B was for brave. Just like my middle name. I am Jackie Robinson. I will always lead the way. And I hope you will too. When others see your example, they'll stand with you. It's the only way the world ever gets changed together. Here's some pictures of the real life Jackie Robinson. A life is not important except in the impact it has on others' lives. So Jackie was born in 1919. In 1942, he went into the army. In 1945, he played in the Negro Baseball League. In 1946, he married Rachel Isom. Isom? Not sure how to say Rachel's last name. In 1947, was his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. In 1947, he also won the first Major League Baseball Rookie of the Year Award. In 1949, he was named the National League's Most Valuable Player. That's only two years after he started. In 1962, that's the year I was born, he was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. And in 1972, he died at his home in Stamford, Connecticut. 
that's where I grew up. And when I was a little girl, sometimes we would ride our bikes by the house where Jackie Robinson lived. I don't think when I was a little girl, I realized just what an important person Jackie Robinson was. I just knew he was a baseball player. But at that time, I didn't understand everything that he had to go through to become one of the most famous sports figures in our lives. But he was much more than that. He was a brave man who made a difference for all of us. I love learning more about Jackie Robinson and what a great example he is to all of us, even today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Jackie too. And you can use his example in your own life. Have a great rest of the day. I'll be back to read to you again soon.